if you could snap your fingers and you know or had a magic genie a magic lamp what type of scenario would you find yourself in mm. what are you doing i'd be home cooking breakfast right now <laughs> the cost of housing is out of control across the country there's an extremely alarming result more americans are now homeless than ever on record but one city has proposed what could be a groundbreaking solution to the homelessness crisis. It's called Bring Chicago Home. Get ready to see a new ballot question next spring involving taxes and homelessness. And the idea is to take the cash made on the sale of pricey Chicago homes and use that money to put roofs over the heads of the homeless. Big corporate landlords are not happy about it. They're trying to stop it however they can. They recognize the national implications of us winning. We came to find out. What exactly are big landlords so afraid of? And despite their efforts, could Chicago change how we address homelessness in this country? Honestly, now when I think back on it, I was just kind of felt like I was in this purgatory. I felt like I was constantly just living, experiencing something outside of myself. Lorna Bennett grew up on Chicago's South Side. When she was only 17, her mother, struggling with addiction and mental illness, forced her to leave home. That's when she started doubling up, crashing with friends or family just for a place to sleep. I wasn't in a shelter and I wasn't on the streets and that's what was considered homeless. It was just a really like confusing time for me. Um, there was no, no way to identify what I was going through. There was no name for it. After five years of doubling up, Lorna finally caught a break and got into a program that helps her pay the rent. That made it possible for her to move into this apartment where she lives with her sons. I didn't unpack a lot of my boxes for years. It took me years to finally like start hanging pictures on my wall of my family. I work my butt off constantly. Everybody knows that. And I'm closer to homelessness than I am to um, ever owning a home right now. In Chicago, almost 70,000 people are experiencing homelessness. Three quarters of them are living like Lorna was, doubled up with whoever will take them. They aren't considered homeless by federal standards, so they don't have access to reliable funding for housing assistance. Bring Chicago Home would change that. The cause of homelessness at its core is the lack of access to affordable housing, period. So it's not so much that we don't know the solution. We do know the solution is more permanent affordable housing. It's how do we get to that point to have that in place. Doug Schenkelberg is one of the people who six years ago began developing the idea for Bring Chicago Home. We came in with the idea that we need to find a revenue stream that can achieve this goal. And so we did a lot of research about what would make the most sense. And that's when we landed on the real estate transfer tax. That's that one-time tax that's paid when real estate is transferred from one owner to another. Right now, property buyers pay a one-time flat tax of 0.75% of sales. Chicago's real estate transfer tax is a fee charged when a property is sold. Right now, it's a flat tax at 0.75%. Bring Chicago Home would raise that tax to 2% for properties sold for over a million dollars. And it would increase it to 3% for those over $1.5 million. The plan would also lower the tax for properties sold for less than 1 million. In Chicago, that's the vast majority of sales. 93% of buyers would get a tax cut. Advocates for the plan estimate it will raise at least $100 million a year for what they call permanent affordable housing. One of the, the main problems we have in our housing system right now is that we treat it as a commodity. We see you know, a venture capitalists coming in and utilizing the housing market as an investment tool. And so the housing market, the real estate market, functions as an income generator for those folks who already have income. We need government intervention to address what you know, can be called a market failure, right? that our markets aren't designed to serve people experiencing homelessness. If you're talking about a real estate market that is driven by profit, why not tax those high level profits to serve those people who are cut out of the system because of how we commodify real estate. One thing about Chicago for many years, it's, it's been a tale of two cities. This is a big, rich town. Cesare Moore is an advocate for the homeless who does outreach to people who are living on the street. We go out to the various tent cities, 
uh, and find homeless people wherever they are, wherever the need is. We give them tents, we give them clothes, we give them hygiene bags. If we can, we give them food. There are people in some of these 10 cities living homeless who are working two jobs. Like many of the people organizing for Bring Chicago Home, Cesare himself is homeless. Right now, he's living at a transitional housing facility that provides meals, mental health care, and job counseling. Those are the types of services that Bring Chicago Home proposes to scale up dramatically across the city. But according to the real estate industry, Chicago cannot afford it. Don't throw an obstacle at small investors and mid-sized investors who are the key to providing affordable housing in the city. And our concern with it is that it's going to affect economic activity for an industry that is at a at a existential um, challenge. We all know the commercial market in Chicago has suffered a lot in the last year. The business class in Chicago are really scared about what's been the status quo for a long time being upset, which is them having control, them being able to set the agenda for the city. There's a number of real estate interests, folks who make incredible profits off of real estate transactions, who have lined up in opposition to bring Chicago home. The face of the opposition are associations that represent uh, realtors. How do you foresee an increase affecting downtown high-rises, for example? It won't be positive. Bring Chicago Home has the support of the city's new mayor, Brandon Johnson, and a majority of the city council. But unlike most legislation, they can't simply pass it into law. That's because of the power of the real estate lobby. Back in the 1990s, it successfully pushed for a state law that requires a popular vote to change the real estate transfer tax. By erecting that barrier, the biggest real estate players have protected themselves from a progressive tax structure for nearly 30 years. I do not see a strong affinity between people like ourselves and people who really are, in, are representing big corporate residential interest. Aisha Ray and her husband Paul own an apartment building on Chicago's south side, where they rent five units. So this building still has in these rooms all of its original wood. They have owned and lived in this building for nearly 40 years. And they personify a split between how small and large landlords are responding to the referendum. I think other people like, uh, like my husband and I, who have a six flat building, that this legislation will help us and not hurt us. To my understanding, the actual percentage of tax that we will pay will drop. Well, hallelujah. I mean, who could be against this? This sounds like a grand idea. Plus, we're addressing this critical social problem at the same time. I think the critical problem is to look at how, what are the cost of 68,000 people in the streets in Chicago? The real estate industry has spent nearly $2 million so far to defeat Bring Chicago Home. On March 19th, the people of Chicago have the chance to decide for themselves. I think this is the civil rights issue of our time. Housing is a human right. And what can you do if you can't have any type of housing security? I think that more than anything, realtors are afraid of what a group of people like me can accomplish when we are working together. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. And if you have ideas for stories you want us to cover next, leave them in the comments.